Welcome back. On today's video, we're going to cover dyno charts. What are they? What what which one's best? What do we ask our shot guy for? What information do we need to gather when we we ask that dreaded question, can I have my dyno sheets? More on that when we get back. All right, we're back. Before we get started, let's cover our bases here a little bit. Help us grow our channel by liking and commenting. If there's questions you have or things I say you don't understand, or I even say it wrong, comment. Help us to grow our channel. Uh, share, like, comment, and subscribe. Click that button down there and subscribe. Okay. Now we got that out of the way. Let's get into this. Dino charts. The first chart we're going to show you is, is the favorite one, average chart. The average chart is average force versus absol absolute velocity. This is compression open, compression closed, rebound open, rebound closed and average it together to get a number. The charts are generally pretty smooth looking, as you see here. Uh, and this has been the baseline chart that we've used for a lot of time. This is the most easy to understand in general form is what we call the average chart. Now, each dyno is going to produce uh, maybe a little different terminology for this. The, the average force versus absolute velocity, I believe, is uh, pretty universal throughout, you know, the market. But how the, you know, the charts are called out may be a little different per dyno manufacturers, okay? On a Maxwell dyno, and I believe CTW and some others, that this average chart is pretty common. Okay, this would be a chart you may get <clears throat> a lot of times shock builders feel like this is too much information the other problem that happens in the market when you go and ask your shot guy for a dyno sheet is you know his first thought is well why do you need it and who are you showing it to so a lot of times you know guys feel like you're going to a different builder and you're trying to take the information that they provided you with with you. Um, I don't know. It's a lifelong, age-old argument of who owns what. Um, but the dyno sheet's not as important to the builder as you is as a lot of people think. If you're if you're if you're the the biggest or the greatest thing you could get out of that was really be low speed. So. Uh, don't be afraid to ask if you need them, okay? Average, average. Uh, that, that first chart is average force versus absolute velocity. Pretty common chart, um, pretty basic, pretty basic chart. The next one will be force versus absolute velocity, okay? This one's a little more complex. This one starts to tell uh, more of the story about the shock. And the way this works, if you get deep into this, you'll see that the dyno has four quadrants and it starts and stops at each quadrant. And that's where this chart comes from. But easier is you have a compression stroke. OK, this is a compression stroke. And in this stroke, I accelerate to maximum speed and then I deaccelerate to stop. So that's acceleration and deacceleration. OK. That's compression open, compression closed. So that's where this chart comes in. Has a line that goes up for compression open, has a line that comes back down for compression closed. Then it goes rebound open, rebound closed. Okay, this is the average chart. The ideal here is to keep the hysteresis or the gap between the lines, you know, as you see from four inches back, trying to keep them gaps minimized. This um, is beneficial in the feel and, and the effect the shock has on the car, okay? Uh, the force you see on the, on the left-hand side here in poundage numbers is what we call zero force, 
So if it's 100 or 300, and in this case, this shock was a left front one 100, but it makes more than that in zero. That's not, this is not a zero point shock, but the zero point as is a, is a good tool that we use to build shocks. And as the zero point goes up, we typically say that shock has more effective force on the rebound stroke. Okay, so we do build a zero, a zero point shock and that it comes in a 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, and 800 value. Okay, it, it's kind of like preloading a spring. You have a 200 pound spring, and when you preload it down, it's stiffer, okay? But it's still 200 pound spring. Now on the shock, as you increase zero force, you also increase the high speed part of the shock or the 10 inch number, and that increases your valving, your generic valve number if you wanna use one, that would increase that number. Uh, but an easy thing to understand because zero point can be pretty complicated, and our original terminology on it was kind of incorrect because now that we're, you know, 900 or 1,000 pound zero points, that old terminology just is obviously not true. But it's quite complex. I can explain it more if we need to. But in general, zero point is the, the from the open to close on the left-hand side of that chart. The next chart was often called the football chart. And the football chart in this scenario doesn't quite look like a football, but if it was more of a 40-40 type shock, then it would look more like a football, okay? But here we have this oval chart, and this is called force versus displacement, okay? The football chart. It also, and, and for reference, this is the same shock four different graphs, okay? Some shock companies will send this football chart or this force versus displacement chart because it's harder to understand. And you have to look at it and understand it's a little harder to determine zero point and stuff like that. But uh, So sometimes I do believe that companies send stuff that you can understand. But that's the football chart. Force versus the lost, um, excuse me, force versus displacement. Um, that's what that chart is, and it's quite common. Now, here's one that's least common. It's vo force versus velocity. Um, I believe Integra uses this chart a fair amount. Um, I really don't personally like it. We're going to have a visitor. I don't personally like it. Uh, I don't use it that much, but it is another chart that can be used in a shock dyno, and it's force versus velocity. It is the same as rebound open, rebound close, which in our terminology is called both. Uh, it's just got it folded out and shown in a different way. Uh, again, like I said, it's a little harder to determine what's going on. The both chart is a lot easier to determine. Uh, but that's the four basic charts of a dyno, and you can get these from your builder. Now understand, when you're doing stuff, numbers are not always as important as we make them. So they are important, but what's really important is piston, piston design, shim stack, shim stack quality, the stack in which you're using, and the use that you're getting ready to apply it to, okay? So it's different for motocross than it is for um, dirt track racing. It's a little different for asphalt. And we're gonna cover that in, 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 in the next video where we're gonna talk a little bit about pistons. So be looking for that or look for it in our uh, library of videos. Uh, again, guys, help us to grow this deal, you know? What we're trying to do is help you guys be better racers with better knowledge, okay? So subscribe, hit that notification bell, keep liking our videos. As always, go left, God bless you, and we'll see you next time.